How's it going, everyone? AFC Finn is back in Football League action. We're here in Wiltshire for Swindon Town. They take on Mansfield in League Two. Today's game means that this season we will have done the Premier League, Championship, League One, and League Two in a season. What an achievement! I have been to this ground once before. It was about ten years ago when Paolo Di Canio was a Swindon manager. They played Cheltenham. 1-1-0, Paolo Di Canio celebrating for the fans who weren't too happy. Lots has changed since then, but stadium remains, and I really liked it when I was here last time. Tomaldo's with me, he's driven us up. Tomaldo, what do you think he's so far? It's all right. Yeah. It's been a tough couple of years for Swindon, but hopefully they seem to have turned a the corner. They were posted on their social media yesterday that like they've been selling shares to fans, so it's always nice to see a support our own club. I think growing up, a lot of people didn't like Swindon because they were Cheltenham's rivals. I've never had an issue with them. I've had to have a bit of a connection with them. My grandmother, back in the 90s, she was she used to work here as like the on-site nurse. She was a qualified nurse, so she'd be sat in the stands. And if, if anyone was suffering for anything medically in the stands, she'd be on-site to help them out. But she's got quite a soft spot for Swindon, always looks out for their results. So I think I'll grab a sign in the club shop. Let's wander around. So, traditional pin badge, £3.50, not bad. And grandma got this nice little teddy bear. It was 12 quid, which is probably a little bit too much, but you know what? It's cute and she'll like it. I shall name you Charlie after Charlie Austin. Also, another interesting thing. You may have noticed Zach McEachran played incredibly when we saw Oxford City last week. Josh McEachran's brother. Today, George McEachran plays for Swindon. So... <laughs> We'll be seeing two of the McEachran family within the space of a week. So the medical room, all those years ago, must be where my dear grandma was. See you into the stadium now. I haven't done this for a while at the players' entrance. We're going to meet Charlie Austin, Tom. Let me drink my fruit shoot in peace. Uh, <laughs> it's a good choice. <laughs> So apparently the Swindon players are already inside. There's the Mansfield coach, Brian Clough's on. I just met Nigel Clough. I met someone who lived with Brian Clough. Thank you, Tom. No oh, mate, I'm fanboying out. Ah, it's a lovely sunny day. And that will be where Swindon train. There's a nice little ground there. So, we're about to go inside the county ground, but before we do, let's find out a little bit about today's host, Swindon Town. Swindon Town were founded in 1879 by Reverend William Pitt. In 1894, they turned professional and joined the Southern League. By virtue of winning the Southern League, in 1911, they would play Football League champions Manchester United in the Community Shield. It was a thrilling affair, with the Red Devils beating Swindon by eight goals to four. Swindon were the founding member of Division Three of the Football League, joining it in 1920, and started off in style, defeating Luton by nine goals to one. During the Second World War, the county ground was used as a POW camp, and Swindon would take a long time to recover from the effects of the war. The 1960s were a great decade for the Robins, though, as they were promoted to the second division in 1963, and in 1969, they caused a huge shock. At Wembley, third division Swindon defeated Arsenal to win the League Cup, and one of the biggest shocks in English football history. It remains Swindon's only major trophy. Swindon caused another upset later that year, as they qualified for the Anglo-Italian League Cup as a result of their victory at Wembley. Swindon defeated Coppa Italia winners Roma over two legs to add this trophy to their cabinets, and the next year they were defeating Napoli 3-0 in the Anglo-Italian Cup final before the game was abandoned in the 79th minute due to violent scenes in the crowd. Swindon was still, however, awarded the trophy, completing a unique hat-trick. A barren spell would follow, however, and in 1982, they were relegated to fourth tier. They won the title in 1986 with 102 points, and they achieved a successive promotion the next year under management of Lou Macari. Aussie our dealers would guide Swindon to play off victory in the second division, but it emerged that Swindon had made several illegal payments to their players, and their promotion was void. Under Glenn Hoddle, a 4-3 victory over Leicester City in the 1993 playoff final saw them achieve first division football for the first ever time. The dream was short-lived, however, as they were relegated after one season, and were relegated again the next season. They would, however, win the Division 2 Championship in 1996. 
The club faced difficulties in the late 90s and early 2000s and flirted with insolvency and they were relegated to League 2 in 2006. Paul Sturrock took them back to League 1 in 2007 and they lost the 2010 playoff final to Millwall. An interesting era began when Paolo Di Canio was appointed manager in 2011. Whilst they started the season poorly, a 15-match unbeaten run got their campaign up and running and they would eventually win the title, finishing on 93 points, also reaching the final of the Football League trophy. Soon they were performing well the next season, but Di Canio would resign in February after falling out with the board. They reached the League 1 player final the next season, but lost 4-0 to Preston. They were relegated to League 2 in 2017. They were declared League 2 champions on points per game in 2020, but were made to suffer thanks to lockdown, with the club facing bankruptcy as a result of the restrictions enforced on football. They were relegated in 2021. The financial hardship continued, with the club at points failing to pay their players, but Australian businessman Clem Morfuni would take over the club to save them. With financial difficulties behind them, they hope to rebuild and return to League One in the near future. Overall, they've won one third division title, three fourth division titles, two Southern Leagues, one Western League, one Anglo-Italian League Cup, one Anglo-Italian Cup, and one League Cup. And a bit of trivia, John Trollope made 770 league appearances for the club between 1960 and 1980, which is a record for most football league appearances for one side by a player. So those are our hosts, Swindon Town. Let's have a look inside their home, the county ground. A sea of red. It's quite cool. I feel like I'm in like a Chinese market or so. Got cheese and onion pasty here. But sadly, I didn't have a vegan roll ready. It would have to be a 20 minute wait, but ho hum. Also got a double decker bar. Let's go to our seats and try them. Giant pasty here. They normally don't disappoint. And neither does this one. Delicious. So here we are in our seats just over an hour before kickoff. All the way out 10 years ago, I was sat up there. Paolo Di Canio was down there, screaming at us at the end. And I've been on this earth for 26 years. I've had many pasties. This is what the best I've ever had. I know I'm always positive about food, being by my standards, this is good. No place to win and I think you get a good food rating. So that is our view for the game, nice and close. Right by the managers, be able to hear everything they say. Ah, it's a lovely day. It's one nil to Swindon. It's about ten minutes after Swindon took the lead. Mansfield has struck back. A lovely bit of turn the right side, balls crossed in and Stephen Quinn has headed it in. They've responded in kind for header, one goal apiece. Some contest happening here. Half an hour in, sloppy bit of defending from Swindon and Lucas Aikens has popped it in. Mansfield have turned it around. Very interesting scoreline as both teams hope to make a push for playoffs. Swindon 1, Mansfield 2. This is madness, only moments after the last goal, Mansfield have broken up field, Swindon defence nowhere to be seen, and Luke Soates 
I saw it a goal, it slipped through the Swindon keeper and in. Completely turned around now. Swindon one, man stop three. Unbelievable. <laughs> So at half time, it's a very disappointing outcome for Swindon. They started off so well, but I think they should have peaked too early. Because after Hepburn Murphy's goal, they've been torn apart by Mansfield. And there had to be some team talk from Jody Morris to get Swindon back into it. But yeah, everyone, people here are very unhappy after it all started so well. And Swindon being completely overrun in the midfield, they will have to turn this about. I can't say a thing other than a Mansfield win as it stands. Absolutely proven wrong. Half time, Swindon one, Mansfield three. Sixty-four minutes in, Mansell breakthrough. I cut inside, curled it into corner. That's the three-point side still delivered. Swindon fans not happy. Swindon one, Mansell four. Yeah. With five minutes to go, Johnny Williams has played through and neatly tucks it into the corner. It won't change the result for Swindon, but it is some form of consolation makes it slightly less humiliating. Swindon 2, Mansfield 4. So that was County Ground, home of Swindon. A very disappointing afternoon for the Robins. It all started so well, but like I said at half time, they just peaked too early. And it was a really shoddy performance from that. There was a bit of momentum towards the end of the game, but that was because Mansfield were confident and safe. So you have to take your hat off to Mansfield, but that's probably Swindon's hopes of reaching the playoffs over for the season. But nothing against the club. Wish them all the best. And hopefully after all the tough times they've had, they can come back stronger. But Mansfield with a performance like that, could well find a place in the playoffs and maybe even seal promotion. So, we've had a fun afternoon. We'll have to see Super Mario now in the cinema. I hope it's good. Tom's pumped, aren't you? Well, yes, he is. Time to rate the experience. So, as always, we start off with the welcome. When we were waiting outside, we spoke to members of staff who were relatively friendly, as were the people serving us. Something I didn't really feel like an outsider there. Obviously, some from Cheltenham who our kind of rivals with Swindon, you might naturally feel uncomfortable, but I honestly felt fine there. And the people that were sat around us, we were able to engage with them, banter with them. So I didn't feel uncomfortable as a neutral there. I think it was a pretty solid welcome, so I'm going to give it a 7.5. In terms of food, drink, I think they really did well with this one. That pasty, like I said, was absolutely delicious. Even by my standards, it was good food. One of the best pasties I've ever had. It was a slight shame about the vegan roll. When I wanted to get it at the start, they said, oh, I'll be ready about 20 minutes. And at half time, they said they'd run out. And bear in mind, I was one of the first in the queue at half time. That so I suggest a bit of lack of preparation. But what I had was still good and quite well priced. So I think the food and drink gets a solid 9 out of 10. Atmosphere, they're a club who I've always noticed have had a very passionate fan base. I've seen Swindon play a few times. A lot of people around me who clearly care a lot about the club, really passionate. And I think the fact that despite the result, they didn't start flooding out as quickly as I've seen in the other grounds. Sadly, in line with the result though, it did go flat at points. But yeah, a passionate fan base and a pretty decent atmosphere. And I have seen the atmosphere better from Swindon fans. I appreciate it's not as good as it can be given the context, but I have to rate it on what I've seen. So I think I'll give the atmosphere a 6.5. Stadium, I think it's one of the best grounds in League 2. The stands that I was sat in and the one opposite are clearly very good. I do think some work needs to be done on the ones either side of the goals because the one to the left of us, a stand with no roof, shouldn't really be happening at this level. And, you know, they never seem to let anyone sit there, so I don't understand the point of it. Either tear it down and start again or let people in. So I think something needs to be done about that stand just to make it 
not so much of an eyesore and make it a more complete stadium. There's some areas that clearly need a lick of paint, but I like the in the inside we were in there was that red hue that you could see because of how they painted it i think that really helps give off a good vibe and it wasn't just generic concrete colors like you see it's a lot of stadiums so i'll give the stadium an 8 out of 10. finally value for money our ticket costs only 15 quid i only had to spend about six quid on like a pasty and drink which yeah it seems expensive but i don't think that's too bad for like a football league club pin badge was fine i did think like the teddy bear got was a bit overpriced i think if i just went to a shop and got that for someone it'd be a fiver whereas it was about 12 quid so i think that was a bit overpriced so there's a point for that i think but apart from that prices were pretty good so i'll give it a solid eight out of ten so that was the county ground home of swindon i'm glad i could finally do this for you and good to do a league two grounds this season to cap off all four of the top tiers of the english football system We've got quite a few more games to go before the season caps out. But Swindon are obviously want to have a family connection with. I wish them all the best the rest of the season and hopefully they can have better days than they did today. Thank you all for watching. I've been AFC Finners. See you next time and stick with us as we go ground to ground. AFC Finners out.